this is Kirk. And this is Bird from the Kirk and Bird Show. Hey, we have some special guests with us tonight. We, uh, we, we've been covering, as you know, uh, NFL over the last week. Uh, we've been covering college football, especially the Virginia Tech Hokies and what's been going on in the top 25. But we're, we're back to our roots. We, we, we love, we've got uh, some more of our, we're going to highlight a couple of high school football players, some really good athletes we're uh, blessed to have tonight. We've got two the two running backs from Bishop Ireton. Um, and I'll let them guys, those guys introduce themselves. We'll start with the senior. AJ, you want to tell us your full name and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Anthony Porter Jr. Um, grew up in Maryland, PG, PG County area. Um, grew up, played football there, and um, took my time to go to Virginia to BI and play high school. Okay. All right. Uh, my name is uh, Daryl Justin Bird. Class of 2023. I um all my life been doing sports track, including not only football. Um, but I uh recently went over to Bishop Ireton to go and play football and uh for my academics. Okay, great, great to have you guys here. So uh I, look, I, I, Bishop Ireton, you, you're playing in a really tough conference. I know I've been tracking you guys. We tweet about you on the show. We've uh, live tweeted from a couple of your games. Um, you, you've had some tough, tough, like this game last week, you all played a uh, rival, uh, Bishop O'Connell, and it was a tough one. I mean, you guys lost 15 to 14, uh, but I see th some things are, you know, you, you're tracking. I know you've had some injuries. We've guys, you guys had to deal with COVID uh, instead of, you know, uh, postponing games. You guys played through. I mean, but but when you're at times when you're missing four, five, six starters due to injury or COVID, I know that's tough, especially with the schedule you guys have. But tell us about this. I believe this is your homecoming week, uh, right? Yes, sir. Tell us who you're playing. Uh, we're playing um, Paula Six Panthers over in Loudoun County. Okay. Homecoming is not a home game? Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying they're from Loudoun County. They're oh, from, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought you yeah, said they built their Loudoun. new campus. Right, they yeah. used to be in Fairfax. And they have that yeah. nice new campus out in Chantilly, Loudoun County. Yep. Yeah. Palace out there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is a, a, a WCAC rivalry game, just like O'Connell, right? Yes, sir. Big yeah. one. So, uh, so uh, Justin, this is your first year, so you've never played against Paul the Six. So, so AJ, tell us a little bit about what, what we can expect. How many years have you been at, at uh, Bishop Ireton? Uh, I've been at Ireton. This will be my third year going there. Okay. Oh, okay. So tell me about the previous two years. Uh, so, um, I mean, junior year, we had COVID, so – we didn't really get the like the the, the fan feel of it, like the crowd base. However, uh, mm -hmm. sophomore year was crazy. Um, the Friday night light game down in their place in Fairfax, it was crazy. Um, oh yeah, I've been there. Their fans were there. Our fans were there. It was deep. It was deep. Um, every time somebody scored, was baby powder being thrown, crowds screaming, um, family, friend. It was just it was a great time. Uh, we came short. We came up short. Uh, lost by seven. But I mean, the same way you saw some fight back in the O'Connell game, um, that's what it was like. And imagine that Friday night, Friday night light atmosphere, fans going yeah. crazy, you score, trying to fight back into the game. It was crazy. Um, yeah. you know, just the guys that were on that team that year, just the brotherhood we had. I mean, it was a loss, but it was a tough game. And I mean, that moment was crazy. Okay. All right. All right. So, Justin, you're just being introduced to this rivalry. You want to tell us what, what do you think? What are you looking forward to? Do you have anything to compare it to? Uh, yes, most definitely, actually. Um, I know throughout all the week, everybody's been talking about, oh, PVI, our rivalry, we got to beat them. You know, they've been talking trash, this and that, this and that. So, it just kind of, you know, builds the intensity that we got to win this game and work hard to, you know, get the job done and bring home that homecoming win. Yeah, Rusty talked a little trash this year about his high school. Uh, we beat him 49-0, so. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
we don't want to go into that. That was this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll stick with the Catholic League. So, <laughs> but, but wait, wait, wait. so uh, okay, we don't want to go into you know yeah. when when we did beat you guys every year up until my senior year. Oh. I think we in oh. the history of your school, Phoebus High School. Bethel dominated them for the first 10 years of existence. Okay. Just but it's okay. only been 35 years since then. So uh, <laughs> so when is the game, guys? When is the game? Or where? Yeah. When? Uh the game's is up on uh, Saturday, October 23rd. So um AJ, yes, sir. two weeks ago you had a phenomenal game. Yeah. Against John Paul the Great. Tell us a, bit, a little bit about that. We looks like you were very, you were feeling healthy. Yeah. Uh, coach running you in the Wildcat. Tell us about that game. Um, so I think the previous game we played, um, uh, St. Stephen's, um, took a tough L, forty eight zero. So um, that whole week of practice, we came out hungry. We came out just really locked into the plays, really trying to execute like the the game plan and the the. Just the, the camarader- camaraderie was different. They came together, um, a whole bigger practice. So I, going to the game, it was like just another day. So, I mean, going to the game, um, we got on the field. The first play had a big hit. So it was like right from the, from the go, it was like, it was like, it's, it's go time. So, yeah, um, yeah, that, that's the big hit. Yeah, got the big, got the big hit. Um, got on O first. Well, so I didn't start that game. It was, it was crazy. Um, you know, TJ, he started that game. His first carry, he scored, but they caught it back for a touch. They caught it back. So I got in the game, first carry, he scored. And then from there, it was a movie. Yeah, yeah. So, so for those that don't know, the final score of that game was 64 to zip. But you talk about uh, touchdowns being called back. You you, you had a couple called back, too. Am I yeah. correct? I think, yeah, I had three in a day, but I should have five. Two yeah, five yeah. Wow. Yep. And then um, you scored some extra points, too. Yeah, scored and some two-pointers. Yeah. I think we did Wildcat, yeah. Uh, and Justin, tell us a little bit about that was your first game uh, uh, playing against John Paul the Great, and tell us how did you do that day? Uh, John Paul the Great, like um, like AJ has said, during the week of practice, everybody was ready. You know, um, after that St. Stephen's game, everybody's like, we can't go out like this. So uh, we worked hard that you know that week. You know, conditioning, getting ready for you know the game. And then come to that game, it just it just clicked. Once we started moving as a team, coming out, you know, in the in the smoke that we had, um, that Coach G brought out the nice smoke. It was like the atmosphere; it it was perfect. So uh, it just went out there and executed, you know, scored, um, locked up my man. So yeah, it, it was a, yeah. it was a good experience. Yeah, you guys had some great games. You know, you guys provided a, a, a great balance of run and pass. I was really proud to see uh, your backup quarterback, Nate, uh, have a lot of success that day. Uh, I think JJ and uh, just uh, everybody looked like they they contributed to that game offensively, defensively, special teams. Yep. And so if you guys can continue that um, for your homecoming, I know it'll be nothing but success. Um, I, I'll tell you a little bit about myself very quickly. I played high school football for the great Dennis Kozlowski. He's in the Virginia Hall of Fame. He's won three state championships. He's coached all type of uh, guys that have played in professionals. He coached Allen Iverson. Um, he coached me. He coached my, my brother Melendez. But a lot of a lot of really good players. But I say that to say, I had an excellent coach who instilled. Um, a lot of values that I carried on through my life, not just as a, uh, uh, a as an athlete, but also as a man, as a leader, and as a coach myself. Uh, and and that, that's happened with a lot of the, his former players. My current, uh, I mean, the current high school coach, uh, a coach of my high school played on, on, on my team uh, there. And he was an all-state player, played at Carolina, played, played professional football. So, But what I, I say all that to say, you guys are blessed to have a special First year coach at Bishop Fireton. Um, can each of you tell me a little bit about your coach? Uh, who you, tell me his name and what 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 the impact he's had on this season and and and, and you guys personally. You want to start off, Jay Ray? I'll start. Uh, we call him Coach G, but uh, Coach Gary Wortham. Um, I've known him because he went to actually Woodbridge High School, right uh, right down the street from where I live. Also, where my mom, um, Dr. Lieber, she works. Uh, used to work actually now she works at Colville. Um, but um he, you know, 
the overall he you know how he coaches and helping Woodbridge and helping you know kids to you know go to college and have an education um, and succeed in life you know just that in him actually reaching out and saying you know he would like me to come to the school it was like first off, I was like yeah we I gotta go so I say overall as a coach now working with him you know during practices, you can feel the, you know, the hard work and the pressure of when we're running and, you know, just that, that, that push and momentum to keep going. But not only that, you know, we have the fun times. Um, there's always the laughing and dancing and, you know, the smoke again, of course, smoke is good. So, but yeah. Okay, cool. What about you? I second that. I mean, Coach D, totally different coaches. Totally a totally different coach from what I've uh, experienced in the past. Um, I mean, he raises intensity every single day. Um, he's always looking for a uh, road to improve. Um, and it's never easy, easy out, easy way out with Coach G. I mean, uh, going from, like, we had a previous coach, Coach Armstrong, a uh, great guy, um, a stand-up dude. Um, he really preached uh, about, like, like it was, for him it was more about, more about off the field things. Um, with Coach G, it's it's both. It's on the field, off the field, next level. So, I mean, Coach G just really wants us to be like the best men we can be, um, beyond the football field, on it, and in our future. So, I mean, it's been a pleasure having Coach G by my side, helping me um, uh, agree for college and map out my future. So, I mean, nothing but good words to say about Coach G. Cool. Justin, chime in. I'm reading, yeah, I'm, he did. I'm, reading yeah. About, I'm reading about him. Is he about our age, Rusty? Yeah, yeah. He's Coach, Coach Wortham is our age. Yep. Where's, he, where's, uh, he, where's he from? Alexandria. Alexandria. He's from Alexandria. He oh, he played at West Potomac. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. He's our age group. Yep. But they were Great good. guy. They were good. A really, they were really good guy. So the thing about him is he's he's had success on the field but but what i i i the one thing i like about him and he reminds me of of some of the best coaches i ever had he can yell at you he can scream but he can also put give you a hug and you can respect the things he's saying because he's passionate and in the end you know he just cares about you he wants you to get better um but you know i've seen he also can be very calm like he says some things he doesn't have to scream you know but but he's not afraid to do it and the kids they they trust him. They believe in him, and so I I know when he says something, he means it. And you can just look at the results. He's got kids playing at all levels of div division levels of college. He's got kids, I think, four right now playing in the SEC. Uh, but the, the most important thing I've seen is those kids when they've graduated, the, the men they've become. He's not only um, gotten kids that are playing in the professional ranks, but they they some of them are even still coach with him. To you know, they have been on his staff. And they've imparted that that same um, um, work ethic and 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 everything on on those youth. Uh, yeah, I was you know I was going to say, you guys at your age, and you've probably known for a while, coach, teacher, or uh, an adult in a leadership position when they don't truly care. You guys can sniff that out. I mean, everybody's had a bad coach. I mean, for, fortunately for me. Most of them were excellent. Most of my teachers were good, but you know, you had some bad apples. So that's, that's good to know. Does, uh, do you guys have fun? Even though it comes down hard on you, do you have fun? Yeah, we all know it's, it's for, it's for a purpose. I mean, when you get the cause can be way worse. And like those guys, if you make a mistake or slip up, you're out of here. It's a business. So, I mean, for, for him to, um, for him to know how it is on the next level and to give us that kind of a, that, that look, so it's not that bad of an, an adjustment when we get there. I mean, you can't ask much more. You, you just know you care for yourself. I mean, you just got to take it, take the coaching, as you always says, trust the coach, trust the process, trust, trust yourself. So, I mean, that's all you got to do. And just know it's for a better purpose, not just for today, it's for tomorrow and days after that. Right. So let me ask you this. We know you guys play football. We know you've got to have your academics in order to be at Bishop Ireton. But tell us, tell us two things about yourself that other people may not know or that you, that are your interests. Like, um, 
you know, just anything. I, I know a lot about this guy over here, Justin. Uh, but, think, but, 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 but let our audience know uh, something about both of you guys. Tell us something um, that people may know or, or that our audience needs to know uh, about you. Um, I'll start off. Um, so I am a big fan of music, you know, music production, making music, you know, producing music myself. Um, you know, I, I just find, you know, just music overall is something I love. And then a second thing um, I would find that, you know, is most important to me is um, I would say, I would say family, you know, um, a lot of time when, you know, we have family reunions or whatnot, um, just being around family, just, you know, make me happy, make me feel at home, you know, yeah. Family is always a big thing. Okay. Cool. AJ. Uh, I'm a uh, Victor's guy. Um, so I probably say some of my off the field, um, uh, off the field hobbies would probably be cooking. Um, I say cooking, um, hooping with the guys, and maybe like just family in general. Because like with football, you always traveling, you got practice. You might be in Philly one week, Vegas the next. So when you're finally home with the family, it's it's like good time. So I mean, that's probably one of the probably the biggest thing outside of cooking and um, moving with the guys. Because I mean, you only get one family, so to be back home after a long time of traveling, it's it's, it's no better feeling. Oh, cool. Uh, do you, uh, AD, do you do you play any other sports besides football? Uh, I mean, I, football, I football Bishop track, and I do uh, short distance. So. Um, okay. You're a sprinter. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sprinting, not long distance though. Kind of you play? Do you play? Industry. You talk about hooping. Do you play basketball? Have you ever played for the uh, high school? I played up until sophomore year. I played freshman year at Pilates, and then that was it. Okay. Right. What kind of four, what kind of forty you running? Uh, right now four seven. Trying to get down there right there. Okay. You running that on a track timed or uh, you running? I'm running that laser. Okay. I can't. Yeah. Are you Justin? Uh, four seven actually same right now. All right. So I got a couple questions. Um, what do you like to cook, AJ? Oh, uh, I'm a big steak guy. Okay. Um, steak, pasta, and every here and there might do like a little uh, shrimp and grits, a little cream sauce. Oh, you can do shrimp and grits. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, my mom told me. She taught you. Say it again. She taught you. Yeah. Where's she from? Uh, she's from uh, Mount Rainier, but her family uh, is based out of the North Carolina, Raleigh. You kind of need okay. Southern. Um, yeah. All right. So, steak, you grill? Uh, grill, sear, all of it. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Um, what's your favorite dish? Ooh. You know the, the, the trivia question they ask if you had to live with just one dish the rest of your life? We're talking fast food or homemade meal? And the rest of your life. Dirt it island. The rest of your life, bro. What would it be? What? Every day. I'm, I'm going to put Chipotle. The next Chipotle. 400 years, bro. What? what are you eating? Chipotle. I'm going with Chipotle. Chipotle. Oh, no. No. Man, I mean, but if we're, if we're talking about uh, cooking, what it's about fresh, all right. Yeah, all right. it's real fresh. I'm not sitting by you and on the uh, bro, not on the bus. No, you don't have that. That's why. If if we're talking home cooking, I gotta go with mom's mac and cheese and yams. Sorry. Okay. Um, All right. And and again, if if you 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 need something to go with that mac and cheese because if you eat mac and cheese, you are. (laughs) You will have problems going to the bathroom. That's all you do for the next fifty years, bro. (laughs) What's your dish? All right. So. I guess I'm gonna have to go with uh, Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. If I had to go with white for the rest of the game, Chick Fil A has to be it. Chick-fil-A. Okay, and you know what? You know what? what? Just like he's gonna get eco, Justin, you will be in line for Chick Fil A <laughs> for two hours in your on your motor scooter because the line is too long and it's too expensive. It is expensive. Okay. Yeah, it's right. expensive, so is, and y'all just lining up for that mess, man. My go-to is jambalaya. What's yours, Hudson? Oh, hey, I like seafood, man. So any way I can fix like some seafood. So 
I can combine like seafood with some Chinese food. So maybe I get uh, like, okay. Okay, so I, I'll give you a specific thing. I'll go Not with seafood. shrimp and broccoli, shrimp and broccoli for the next 50 years because I'm getting my greens and I'm getting my shrimp. Shrimp, sh shrimp pad thai might be my second. Well, all right, let's, let's move on to music. All right. So Ooh. Justin, Ooh. talk to me a little bit about music. What do you like now? In the past, what do you consider the way past? Talk to me about music. And I want to hear you too, AJ. This is where we're going to have some fun. Okay, so uh, first of all, I like, you know, all types of music. Um, so, you know, I joke with, you know, my dad about the old school generation. See, the old school generation, it, it, it always has a nice flow, a nice slow flow to it. And then, you know, the rappers always have, you know, a nice, you know, easy flow into it. Yep. Now, you know, they also now, have a point to it, the lyrics. It, they're telling a story and they're making whoa, a point. Whoa. I just wanted to add that, okay? Whoa, whoa, now. So, Are you just talking about rap? Yeah, rap. He's talking about rap. Okay, before rap, there's rhythm and R&B, like 70s R&B. So if you're talking about rap, actually, in the very beginning, it's a little history lesson for you. Um, what really took off rap, if you listen to Run DMC in the beginning, and if you listen to, you know, Curtis Blow and uh, Grandmaster. Telling Scott, stories, man. And a lot of, that a lot of electric guitar, a lot. Of, it, Run DMC, way before that Aerosmith thing. King of Rock, you know, a lot of yeah. electric guitar, huge percussion. And then towards, you know, you know, a lot of pap, 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 pap. But then... The West Coast came and kind of slowed it down and smoothed it down and guys flow, you know, so that's that's how it's changed. But I mean, you've got grandparents. What about old school stuff? You know, Marvin Gaye and uh, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. hold, hold on. Uh, Kirk, to them, old school rap is the old school. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, I know. But they've heard of the good stuff. I mean, you know what? Hold on. I know. Yeah, we grew up. The old stuff to us was the was Motown. But you know what's old to them? New edition. Mm. Uh, candy uh, girl. Uh, candy girl. That's right. That's old right. school. So, for them. all right. So, what about today? Y'all like that mumble rap, right? AJ, who like like mumble rap? I'm a, I'm a culture guy. Uh, so You're they have like little. They they have like a little. Uh, the um versus the versus uh wars on um yeah I live thing I think I live something like that but uh um so I just I just got back hip to um the Isley Brothers and the um oh, Urban, that Urban was Fire. nice that was a good one oh you sure. know Earth Wind and Fire yep Earth Wind and Fire Earth Wind and Fire bro it was they were I here I missed them they were here <laughs> with uh Carlos Santana in uh, Manassas wow man I oh, yeah. I, I got mad respect for you AJ. The way of the world, uh, September, man, I, I, that's good. Okay. Yeah. All right. but, I, so mean, I, I got a question for you guys. What type of movie do you like? And what would you say is one of your favorite movies of all time? I have an answer, but I, I want to hear you guys. Whoa. You too, Kirk. Think about it. Uh, I, I'm old, man. I'm, I'm answer like that. I'll go first. I mean, just just because like it would have such like an impact on me as a little kid uh stomp the yard um oh, okay. kind of, all right and a rather kid to move trying to be the cool dude on campus like that just set the tone for like school for high like that that's the motto set the tone be the okay. cool guy on campus in a fraternity so that's kind of stuck with me my whole life so that's, that's, that's a yard. great one that's yep. and if you if you consider fraternity consider the only and the best alpha phi alpha the number one fraternity, the first, the best. I'm just, just throwing a plug out there, you know. Martin Luther King, you know, whatever. Uh, Justin, movie for you. Uh, I would have to say all time. I would have to actually go with uh, Remember the Titans. I, no! I love it. I watched it the other night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. That's a good answer because your cousins graduated from TC. Yep. <laughs> Right. Good Goodfellas used to be my number one movie, The Mafia, based off of Henry Hill. That's a great movie. But then remember the Titans. Um, by the way, I know a guy that played against them. He was uh, oh, wow. he graduated in 72 and they he played for Annandale. 
And uh, okay. starting the tailback. We were talking about Jeremiah Davis. All right, Hudson, let's right. see what okay. you got. So I, and I know a guy, I refereed high school basketball with a guy that was on that team. We refed the game at T.C. Williams when the movie was out at that right. time. And yep. we looked in the showcase, and he, he was on the picture with the team. Uh, but for me, the, the best movie of all time that I love to this day, I can watch it a million times. And I, and I even had a greater love for it once I found out more about the guy that produced it, is Hoop Dreams. If you've never yeah. seen it, it and follows the, the right the, the producer of that movie, I didn't find out until you know maybe 10 years ago, was from Hampton. Uh, he, he grew up in Hampton, went to Hampton High School, played basketball. And but he followed Arthur Ag and um and Gates William Gates, yeah and and guys it it with my love for sports but to see these young men in Chicago you see them as eighth graders and then all the way through uh, up to you know they're them going off to college they were followed you know for for about five or six years so that is my all time favorite movie you got to see that movie. I was living in Reston, so that had to come out in like 93, 94, 95. They were yeah. the same year as Chris Weber, Juwan Howard. Howard, yeah. Yeah, and that movie is a great example of a coach who was using the kids. That guy at St. Joseph's, and I'll go on the record because anybody can see this. He coached Isaiah Thomas, and yeah. they make him out to be – Really bad, but man, you want to he, he made about, himself out to be what he was. Hard, that, and, <clears throat> uh, Cabrini uh, Green, which I think Rusty, they're getting ready to tear down. Cabrini Green is a housing project in Chicago that makes you know it's unbelievable. That's where Gates lived. Gates was a point guard and was a starter as a freshman, and until he tore his meniscus, was recruited by everyone. And they show the dichotomy of. Arthur Agee was a raw player going to Chicago public school. And he goes, and these kids like, you know, AJ, where you live, think about taking the Metro on a bus and walking. That's what they were doing, you know, because they were coming from the inner city. Of course, Gates had a setup, you know, he was a star. I don't think he took the train, but uh, yeah, you guys should watch that. That's a great movie. And by the great way, movie. Rusty, uh, Gates, quit the team at Marquette, but got his degree. He's back in Chicago. He was back in Cabrini Green, and I think his son's a prospect, but, but you guys yeah. should definitely, you will love that. They tell you, they, they teach you all about the recruiting process, and it's a lot different now, but that's a good one. All right, so what about oh, – let me, let me chime in. How different do you think it is now? Because it is very different between when we were your age because this would have been 1985 86 for us what's that 36 37 years ago all right no computers there were computers but not personal computers no phones so talk to just you know what it's like and we'll switch orders here i think uh, we also I, I think a big one kirk is there was no social media and i think that right. plays a big role in and not just you guys growing up as, as teenage boys in this in this era, but also it has, and you could talk to this a little bit about the impact on the whole recruiting process. Right. You know, like that that is very different, not just 30 years from 30 years, but even five and 10 years ago. So tell us a little bit about what you guys do on social media um, and, 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 um, and, and what, some of the things, the way you've seen, you know, you compare what you, you, you thought things were like and what it's like for us now. With you guys now, why don't you, mm. why don't you go ahead, AJ? Um, uh, to, to me, me personally, I prefer like, um, uh, I lived off the grid, so back in that era, like back in your era or 37 years ago, I, I'd be fine with that because, like, I mean, there's no leverage, just boys being boys, playing football, just living their life, even when it comes to like being social, like, there's no like, oh, he has 13k on IG, so I'm gonna go talk to him, there's no like. There's no like uh, I don't know. It's not abuse of, abuse of a power, but like I mean, it's just it's just there's like even playing field. So I mean, I just feel like times back then probably were chill. I mean, if you're that guy on campus, you're that guy on campus, and yeah, when you left yeah. there. You, when you left there, you were just you know, even Steven. You're just a regular guy. So I mean, I don't know. Social media. I mean, it just 
it creates conflict and people want to beef and just it, it, it's just too much. And people like to compare lives when you don't know what that person might be going through in the game. He might he might just got an offer. He might just got a new car, new house, new girl, but he might be depressed. He might be going through the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's a lot of people. Or it might be yeah, broke. Great point. Yeah, yeah, that too. Big house and a big car. You're be very broke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. That's good. What about you, Justin? Yeah, I mean, going off, like, I'm talking about like, the old days, yeah, you know, without the internet, I feel, you know, going outside and, you know, playing outside. I remember actually, you know, before I even, you know, uh, used to, I was young. I was actually young. I would always go outside and play. It would, it would be the one thing I would always go outside and play, you know, with kids in the neighborhood, go to football, stuff like that. You know, yeah. you know, growing up now with all these, um, the electronic and social media, you know, it just it just changes a lot. You know, a lot of kids don't go outside anymore. You know, yeah. some kids, you know, actually don't even do any sports at all, but, you know, end up, you know, staying inside and whatnot. But, um, you know, going back, it also, social media actually changes, you know, how, you know, people feel sometimes. And, you know, sometimes people can, you know, become depressed. Um, by seeing, you know, how other people's lives are and then thinking about theirs. Um, but, um, you know, not putting down social media, you know, but now social media, you know, is a main thing and, you know, helps with recruiting. So, you know, you can put your film out there for football. <clears throat> you know, coaches around the world, uh, around the country can see, um, you know, your film and who you are and, you know, what your talents are. So, you know. Yeah, I, I will say this. Um, there, there, there are some advantages to see, you know, being able to access and see, you know, you know, I remember, you know, Zion, when, when he was in high school, he was a legend with all these great dunks and he did it at Duke Not and he in the league. And you see, so social media can make people a star before they're ready to be stars. But I'll tell you what, we didn't have social media. If, and let me just give you an example of what, what if somebody was good and they were a legend, you went to see him. They weren't a legend because you saw, because the thing I, with, 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 with all these huddle highlights is that it's just that. It's the highlights. If you, <laughs> you have 30 plays in the game, but you're only putting four out there, you might have had 20 bad plays. But what we used to do, man, when you, and I'm going to give you an example. Allen Island Iverson, mm -hmm. you didn't just hear about him. You had to go see him. And it, it was, and once you saw him, it was amazing. So we could no longer play basketball games at my high school. They then moved them to Hampton University. And then they actually had to play in the Hampton Coliseum, which is like the capital center here, you know, okay. eight to 10,000 people to play a high school basketball game because people had to see it for their own eyes. And there's nothing like that. I mean, and I'm going to go back even, you know, what, 10, 12 years ago when Kevin Durant was right here. PG County playing. I remember there was a big matchup with him against Scotty Reynolds, at, and they had to play the game at George Mason. You had to go see it, and and that's that's one of the things I think the social media kind of robs us of. Yeah, I think even like on a small level, my dad was saying like growing up, like I mean, say you're from this block, and over there they got a good player. It's like, oh, he's he's tough, he's tough, he's tough. No, I I can't I can't go with you, but I can't go out with you saying so I see him so. They'll walk over there and go see him. Oh, he's the real deal. Oh, let's hop in and play against him. Like, it was like, it's not, you're not basing your opinion off what you see on social media or just like the clout they have. It's like you see it in person and you either like what they yeah. like what you saw or you didn't. So, yeah. I mean, and even today's bro, like, like, I mean, I might, do, it might, it might have happened to me. I might have been the upper, upper side of that stick where, um, like, people would just like, oh, you like him? Oh, I like him too. Like, it just, it just creates like a, a a biased kind of view on you. Like either you, you're hated or you're most popular. It can go either way. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I had a question real quick. What's the first thing you did when you wake up, both of you? Today? Every day. Uh, it's pray. Pray and then hop on the phone. <laughs> okay. Good, good order. What about you, Justin? Uh, I recently started um, doing, I do push-ups and sit-ups in the mornings. Gotcha. First one. When do you hit the phone? 
right? Like when I'm like about to go to school, uh, I usually let my dad know. Me to school. Wow. So how many minutes do you go before you look at the phone? Um, We've had to make sure he gets it as he gets in the car to go, and that's what. That's, and then he that's incredible, man. I like that. Because yeah. um, I think most kids, the first thing they do is look for the phone to see where they got hit up on Snapchat and Instagram and everything else in the world. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah. So um, let's talk about homecoming. So all the single ladies will be there. And um, I don't know a whole bunch of married jun- seniors or juniors, Kirk. I'm just- in high school? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was, ref- I was referring to Beyonce's song, but you're so. Oh, right. okay. I know. Single right. ladies, yeah. So, um, so what's it? Let me ask you guys. You know, we were cutting up a little bit. What do y'all think about when you look back? You know, you've got parents that go back to the. 80s and 70s and you see all the bell bottoms and you know the pork chop sideburns and all this funky stuff but what do y'all think about your style and what do you think that style is going to be in about 10 or 12 years Ooh. I don't know you can go ahead Jay, right? I'm going to tell you right now what one of the things you could talk about our style and and Kirk I'm I'm not the 70s. I, I'm a, I was a baby in the 70s. I, my, my, era, my era was the 80s and the 90s. All right. My parents were the 60s and 70s. But I just want to say this, okay? I know what y'all era represents to me. It's skinny jeans. I know both of y'all was rocking skinny jeans. I can see y'all wearing skinny jeans. That's what. I don't know about that one. I mean. Uh, hold on. I'm going to tell you something. Man. I may, I'm not busting on you. I know it's cool. But back in our day, both of y'all's haircuts, you would have been made fun of as Eddie Murphy buckwheat on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> that crusty the clown, nappy-headed stuff. And yeah. then my kids with the mullets in the blonde, I, I can't believe they're doing that. And let me tell you, fashion goes around, by the way, because the fro- I, yeah, I agree. So here's the thing. Those tight clothes, they'll come back. I call them Pee Wee Herman suits, you know? Like... You know, when we we were taught to dress, Rusty, you never, you always wore black um, shoes, black shoes. Colorful shoes are in now. And man, I was at Loudoun County Courthouse the other day and some attorney walked in. The kid was like 33 years old and he had these really floor, uh, brown, light brown shoes, which are cool, by the way. I like those. But he had on socks with like oh socks, socks. hey sock yeah. game is important now man oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I sure. work in the federal yeah. government state department and 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 and, and the play is your 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 short your pants are a little bit short because we had the hot water era because of Michael Jackson 80s, remember that 80s. yeah yeah the eighties we were rocking the hot water clothes. and 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 you but now like there's an emphasis on your style of socks man I'm, yeah. I'm saying at least in a dressy but. Form, man. You guys, I guarantee you, Rusty, I would say by the time they're 30, we'll go through a cycle where neat trim hair will come back. And by the time you guys are our age, your kids might be dressing just like you. But you see, but it's the thing. What Kirk's saying is, is, but there's no difference between your hairstyle now and the afros that we had in the 70s. Oh, no. Just to tell you, when I was a kid, I had the, look, I'm bald now. The bra I had that good hair. I had a big old afro, and it Box was up. huge. And I remember my uncle saying, "Hey, boy, when you gonna cut your hair?" You know. So it 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 just goes. It's just a cycle. It's just a cycle. I think your, your hairstyle. I think those are nice. It's grown on me because when it first came out, I was like, "What y'all doing?" But <laughs> you know, it, it's expressing yourselves, and as long as it's clean, you know, it, it's all good. But but we all went through those phases. What's the um? I saw some kid on the other day going to homecoming with a CG belt or a GC. What is that? GG? Was it GG? Was it GG? I thought it was CG. I don't, I don't know what CG is. That might have been a fake belt. Dolce Cabana, I know, is one of them. Oh. Uh, I don't uh, know what it was, DC. but uh, designer, designer stuff. Might have been DC. I couldn't afford a pair of shoes more than 20 bucks, Rusty. These kids now are wearing like $400, $500 shoes. You know, you was balling if you had $20 shoes. You was balling. 
Yeah. Hey, but look, <clears throat> you guys have been great. We appreciate having you on the show. We, we'll close with this. Um, tell us um, where you want to, you hope to see yourself in the next five to 10 years. Ah, um, I go first. Um, five to 10 years, I see myself either still playing or involved in the game. Um, either way, making a lot of money, um, providing for my mom, providing for my dad, um, and making sure they're either not working because they have to or um, in position to work, like, in a job they – in a field they want to work in, like, a field they would love to work in, so it's not really, like, a job to them. And um, just in, if, if that, by that time, if I have kids or a family, just make sure they're provided for and make sure we have a good bond and – Keeping keeping in mind what God uh, man upstairs got, and from there just living life. I mean, no more can you ask for. Happy family, relationship with God, all's all's good. Hey AJ, would you like to be my son? I like that answer. I'm just, I'm just messing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I would say you know five ten years, um, still be involved in you know football or track, um, some type of sport. Um, if not a sport, you know, at least working out, keeping my body fit. Um, but, you know, I also, you know, want to be helping others, you know, um, doing volunteer work for the church or, you know, either helping, you know, children achieve their dreams as, you know, our coaches do now for us, you know, try to, you know, help everyone succeed in some type of way. Um, helping get back. Like, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. also, you know, also, you know, like, you know, AJ said, giving back to, you know, my parents and my family, you know, just thanking them everything, you know, they've done for me, you know, to get me to where I will be in the point I'm now today. So, yeah. Good stuff, guys. You guys have your feet on the ground. And the other thing is education is key. Um, don't listen to any of this garbage about, a college degree is not worth this or whatever. It's the experience, you know, what you all are going through now. Do you really want to go to work when you could go to school for four years for 15 hours a week and there's pretty girls and all that stuff and fun and fraternities? And then, uh, you know, just making good, sound decisions because we live in a world, and by the way, you, ain't, you don't have to be a gangster or a hoodlum for this. We live in a world, man, where you... You can say or do something wrong real quick. Rusty and I too, you know, and you lose your life. You know, we road rage around here. Rusty, you drove the city today. Yeah. If somebody's <laughs> going 95 miles an hour behind you. You don't want to start, you know, the old school. You just let them go and crazy things are happening. But man, it was a lot of fun talking to you guys. Really like uh, talking to kids your age. I've got a son uh, your age, Justin. So, Thanks for being on and uh, follow us on Twitter at the Kirkenberg, B-O-R-D. We've got a YouTube channel that this will be on, uh, which is the Kirkenberg, B-Y-R-D show. Everybody sign up, spread it like wildfire. And then if you ever want to do a podcast, which is kind of bigger with older people, just the audio, this is on Amazon, Spotify, Apple, and Google. OK, so if you look up the Kirk and Berg on a Google search, those will all come up and th those four cover it. Anything else you want to prop up or and let these guys close out if they want to plug something for Bishop? I, I, I just want to say one thing. You guys, um, I'm glad we were able to have you on the show. Keep the one thing I really like that you talked about is your faith. Keep, you know, keep Christ first with Kirk and I are Christians. Um, and so, you know, you can't just take uh, for granted the fact that you guys attend a, a Catholic school to know that you, you you know the Lord. So keep that first and all these things will work out. Yes, sir. Closing, what's up for homecoming, man? What's the prediction? I mean, um, it's got to be a win. Oh, yeah, win for sure. Um, taking our coaching, taking our, uh, taking our efforts in um, brotherhood. Going into the week, I'm saying we beat those guys. Uh, 14 plus. I'm saying 14 plus. Okay. Two All right. Now. Gotta bounce back. All yeah, right. We're good. You, we're looking for a lot of tough. So we're going into the week a little bit different this week. So that's good stuff, guys. All right.
Thank you for being on. Appreciate it. No problem. All right, that's the Cook and Bird Show. Cook and Bird out. Thank you.